we know that the measurable properties of gases are volume, temperature, pressure and mass. The interrelation between these properties is given by the gas laws. Let us recall an activity and its observations which we performed to understand the concept of compressibility. What did you observe in that activity? Volume of the same quantity of air decreases with an increase in pressure. This property of air was generalized for all the gases successfully by Robert Boyle in 1662. This generalized statement is known as Boyle's law. What does this law state? Boyle's law states that the volume of a given mass of a gas is inversely proportional to its pressure at constant temperature. Let's derive a mathematical statement now. Let a mass of a gas occupy at volume V, at pressure P, at constant temperature. Then, according to Boyle's law, we can write it as V is directly proportional to 1 by P T constant or V is equal to K into 1 by P where K is a proportionality constant or PV is equal to K is equal to constant. Boyle's law equation can be applied for the same quantity of gas under two different conditions also. Let's derive this equation for mathematical application of Boyle's law. Let the volume of a given mass of a gas at pressure P at a constant temperature T be V1. Now change the pressure to P2. Let the volume of the same quantity of gas be changed to V2 at constant temperature T. Now, by applying Boyle's law for both the conditions, we get P1V1 is equal to K and P2V2 is equal to K. Thus, we get P1V1 is equal to P2, V2 is equal to constant. Thus we conclude that the product of PV for a given mass of a gas at any temperature is always a constant. Can we express Boyle's law graphically and prove its validity? Yes, we can. Let's move on to do this. When an experiment is conducted to know the volume change with change in pressure at constant temperature, then we get the readings are tabulated. Take a pressure in atmospheres on axis X and calibrate as shown here. Take volume in ml on axis Y and calibrate as shown. Mark the points as per the readings in the table. Then join them with free hand from points 1 to 5. You get a curve as such. You might have observed that at any value of pressure and volume, the product of pressure and volume is always constant. You have observed that the product of pressure and volume of gas at constant temperature is always constant. The curve obtained is called isotherm. The shape of the curve is rectangular hyperbola. Hope you are clear with the generalized relation between pressure and volume for a given mass of gas at constant temperature. Similarly, another one is the effect of temperature on volume of a given mass as studied by Jacques Charles on 1787. Let's do an activity to understand this concept. Take an empty thick glass bottle. Take a fine rubber balloon, stretch its mouth and invert it over the neck of the empty bottle. Tie it tightly in order to prevent outside air entering the bottle. Now place the bottle in hot water bath. Keep watching what happens. We observe that the balloon bulges out gradually after some time. 
After balloon bulges to considerable amount, remove the bottle from hot water bath and place it in a trough of ice cold water. Now observe the change. We observe that gradually the balloon becomes flat once again. This gives a conclusion that on heating air expands and due to the entry of air into balloon it bulges out. Based on this observation the generalized statement is stated as at constant pressure, the volume of a given mass of gas increases or decreases with an increase or decrease in temperature. Charles stated this law. The law states that at constant pressure, the volume of a given mass of gas increases with an increase in temperature or decreases with a decrease in temperature by a value of 1 by 273rd of its original volume at 0 degrees Celsius for every 1 degree centigrade change in temperature. Let us now see how we can get the mathematical expression for this law. Let the volume of the gas at 0 degrees Celsius be V0. Let the volume of the gas at any other temperature of T degrees Celsius be Vt. Now, according to Charles' law, increase in volume for every 1 degree Celsius rise in temperature B 1 by 273 V0 is equal to V0 by 273. Thus, net volume is equal to V0 plus V0 by 273. Net volume at T degrees Celsius is equal to Vt that is in turn equal to V0 plus V0 by 273 multiplied by T or Vt is equal to V0 into 1 plus T by 273 or Vt is equal to V0 of 273 plus T by 273. Let 273 plus T is equal to capital T. Capital T is the temperature on the absolute scale of temperature. On the absolute scale of temperature, the volume of the gas V1 at temperature T1 is given by V1 is equal to V0 of 273 plus T1 by 273 is equal to V0 into T1 by 273 that is again equal to V0 by 273 into T1. Since V0 and 273 are constant, V0 by 273 is also a constant. Then V1 is equal to constant into T1 or V1 by T1 is equal to constant. Similarly, at another temperature T2, we get V2 by T2 is equal to constant. Thus, we get V1 by T1 is equal to V2 by T2 is equal to constant. From this equation, we get V by T is equal to constant or V is directly proportional to capital T at constant pressure. From the relation obtained, V is directly proportional to T at constant pressure, Charles' law can be stated as, at constant pressure, the volume of a given mass of a gas is directly proportional to the absolute temperature. We have successfully plotted a graph to prove Boyle's law. Now, let's try to have a graphical representation of Charles' law. Take temperature in Celsius scale on x-axis and volume in ml on y-axis. When a graph is plotted, we get a straight line descending towards x-axis. But to be noted here is that 
the line doesn't intersect the origin. It intersects at a point on y-axis. What does this represent? It shows that the volume of the gas doesn't become zero at zero degrees Celsius. Now, if you extend the line backward till it intersects the x-axis, then the line intersects at minus 273 degrees Celsius. This temperature of minus 273 degrees Celsius at which the volume of the gas becomes zero is called as absolute zero of temperature. Kelvin proposed a new scale of temperature on which the point zero is equal to minus 273 degrees Celsius on Celsius scale. This scale of temperature with similar calibration of Celsius scale but zero Kelvin is equal to minus 273 degrees Celsius is called the Kelvin scale of temperature or absolute scale of temperature. It was suggested by scientists to convert the temperature from degree centigrade to Kelvin in all numerical calculations. The conversion of centigrade to Kelvin is done by using this expression. T Kelvin is equal to T degrees Celsius plus 273. For example, 10 degrees Celsius is equal to 10 plus 273. That is 283 Kelvin. In the previous sections of our topic, we had discussed how the fragrance of incense sticks spreads all over the room within short time. From those observations, we have learned the property of diffusion of gases. Let's now do a small experiment to know more about diffusion. Take a glass jar and place a few copper turnings. Now add about 3 milliliters of concentrated nitric acid. You can observe copper turnings reacting with the added acid. After some time you observe the jar. What do you see? Reddish brown colored fumes evolve in the reaction and more above thereby occupying the entire jar after some time. What does it indicate? It indicates that the evolved reddish brown gas of nitrogen dioxide has occupied the entire jar due to diffusion. Is there any other property about diffusion to be learnt? Yes, of course. So, join hands with me to do one more experiment to understand this new concept. Take a long clean glass tube, then take two cotton plugs. Soak one cotton plug in concentrated hydrochloric acid. Soak another cotton plug in aqueous ammonia solution. Then immediately insert the two plugs each at the extreme ends of the tube. After some time, what do you observe? A ring of white dense fumes forms inside the glass tube. What is this ring? It is the product of the reaction between hydrochloric acid and ammonia giving rise to ammonium chloride. Mark the point on the glass tube where the white ring is formed. Then measure the distance between ring and ammonia plug and also between ring and hydrochloric acid plug. What do you observe? The distance between ammonia and ring is more than the distance between ring and hydrochloric acid. What do you understand by these observations? From the observations, we can understand a few concepts. Firstly, we understand that all gases do not diffuse with the same speed. Then, how to determine the speed of diffusion? Can you tell me the molecular weight of ammonia gas? Yes, it is 17 grams. Similarly, the molecular weight of HCl gas is 36.5 grams. If you relate this molecular weight with the distances traveled by the gases, then you can conclude that lighter gases diffuse faster 
than the heavier gases. Can we generalize all these observations? We need not do at all because Thomas Graham had already generalized these observations in the form of Graham's law of diffusion. Let us take a look at these laws. Graham's law of diffusion states that under similar condition of temperature and pressure, rates of diffusion of gases are inversely proportional to the square roots of their densities. Let's derive a mathematical expression for this law. Let R1 and R2 be the rates of diffusion of two gases 1 and 2 and let D1 and D2 be the densities of two gases respectively. Then according to Graham's law the relation is R1 by R2 is equal to D2 by D1. From equation 1 we can say that rate of diffusion is inversely proportional to its density that is R is inversely proportional to root of 1 by D. What do you understand by these expressions? We can say that rate of diffusion of a gas decreases as its density decreases. I hope you all know that density of a gas depends on its molecular weight. What can we conclude from this? We can say that the rate of diffusion of a gas is inversely proportional to the square root of the molecular weight of a gas. Mathematically, we can show it as R is directly proportional to 1 by square root of M or R is inversely proportional to the square root of M. And so, R1 by R2 is equal to square root of M1 by M2. Graham's law has a unique application. It helps in detecting a poisonous gas called marsh gas in the coal mines. How is it possible? This is because methane being a lighter gas diffuses faster and can be detected. Dear students, hope you had a pleasant learning session with us. Let me tell you the list of what you have learned about in this. Common properties of gases, unique properties of gases, measurable properties of gases, structure of barometer and manometer, gas laws in which Boyle's law and Charles' law were dealt with their mathematical expressions and graphical representations, and Graham's law of diffusion and its application.